It's your host, Tim Newton. The Purdue Boilermakers kept hold of the Cannon Trophy last Saturday, knocking off Illinois 31 to 24 to improve to six and four on the season and four and three in the Big Ten. The Boilermakers have two games left in the regular season. A senior day matchup on Saturday against the Northwestern Wildcats, and then a week from Saturday, the Old Oak and Bucket Battle against Indiana. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. It is uh, Tim Newton along with head coach Jeff Brown. We've got Boilermaker football to talk about for the rest of the hour. You can call in 888-246-2678. You can follow along tonight on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site. Let us know where you're watching and if you have a question there. And also we're on Twitter on the Purdue football site. In addition to the head coach, we have quarterback Aiden O'Connell joining us later on in the show along with linebacker Jalen Graham. We'll hear from the head coach when we come back. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It's really tough to get loose. Cold weather, November football in the Big Ten. Hello, up over the top, Payne Durham, the hurdle. In West Lafayette. They go right back to Maccabi. And he's in! Touchdown, Purdue! A drive that belongs to Devin Mockaby. Four carries, 46 yards for a Boilermaker touchdown. You think about last week and then the start of this game, so many throws. The penalty negates the interception. Purdue stays on the field. O'Connell floats it. It's caught! Touchdown! Charlie Jones! Just able to kind of get himself to game day week in and week out. And this is the one rare time. Can they put out the flames here? O'Connell. Rolling left, floats back in the end zone, jump ball. It was caught. Touchdown, Purdue! Payne Durham fires the Boilermakers in front. Be fourth down and they back him up, so it makes the field goal attempt. Really a question of which foot comes down. Play action. O'Connell. It's caught. Payne Durham dragging a man all the way for a Purdue touchdown. Touchdown signal given, Payne Durham muscling his way to breaking the plane and firing Purdue back in front. We've been talking about the tight end being an issue for the Illinois defense. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. And we are joined by the head coach. And, uh, Jeff, I've got to say that was one of the more intense football games I've seen on Saturday. Um, it's a rivalry game, a trophy game, and it, it played out that way. You know, I was really proud of our team and, and our coaches. Uh, we had had a rough couple of weeks and, uh, you know, really had to kind of just button down and uh, figure out a way to get better and uh, not allow it to get us down. And I, I thought, uh, you know, even though we weren't perfect at anything, uh, emotionally we were into the game. Uh, we really wanted to win. Uh, we showed fight. We showed grit. Uh, we showed toughness. Uh, sometimes it got a little out of hand, but uh, we, we really – displayed uh, the ability to, to fight uh, for a win. And I just think that was a great quality that, uh, you know, our guys came ready to go. And uh, when you go on the road against a really good team that's playing well and find a way to win, it's a great accomplishment. You had mentioned last week your team was going to have to learn to win from behind sometimes because even though you want to get off to great starts, it doesn't always happen that way. And Illinois jumped on you quickly, 7 nothing. But I, I think you have to be happy with the way your team responded. Both times they got behind in the first half. Without question, I, I think that uh, – you know, we did enough uh, to find a way to win. Uh, we hung in there when things didn't look great and, uh, you know, kept the game close and uh, showed some fight and we were able to respond on defense and get some stops. Uh, we were able to 
uh, regroup on offense and, and find a way to get it in the end zone. In the second half, I thought we came ready to play as well. And I just think uh, our guys really wanted to win. And uh, we knew what was on the line uh, deep down. And while it's about getting better and winning the next game, we also knew that, uh, you know, there's always a lot to play for. And if you, if you give in, you're not going to win. I just think our guys really, really uh, played hard. And, uh, and it was great to see. All right, again, 888-246-2678 is our number. We'll go to the phone lines. A familiar voice, Don, calling in from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Uh, congratulations on the big win. I got two questions for you. Um, it seemed like there were an awful lot of pass interference calls in that Illinois game. Are there uh, direct rules on that, or is it a, basically a judgment call? And the second question, I know you have injuries at the linebacking position, and who are the uh, guys uh, next to step up to uh, – to play on Saturday. Thank you and, and good luck. Okay, well, thanks, Don. A lot of good questions. I think uh, your first question on the pass interference calls, uh, you know what? Uh, we throw the ball quite a bit, and uh, they're a team that have played really good on defense, and uh, they get up and guard you. Uh, they don't press you a whole lot. They kind of sit at six yards, and they like to grab you when you run your routes. And it's noticeable on film. Uh, they do it all the time, and uh, they get away with it sometimes, and sometimes they don't. And it causes you sometimes not to throw the ball as much because if they get away with it, you're not going to get open. So our, the referees were aware uh, because I made them aware that, hey, you know, we, we need to call interference if it's, uh, if it's there. If it's not, don't call it. But uh, that needs to be on both sides. So we got called for a few. We had an interception that uh, – we gave a little bit of nudge. It wasn't much, and they called pass interference. We had another good play by Trice on the sideline. It just gave a little bit of nudge. It wasn't much, but they called pass interference. And, uh, you know, as I look back at the film, uh, all the ones they called on them were pass interference, and there was probably two early in the game that they didn't call. Uh, uh, the first fourth down to Payne Durham, they were all over him, holding him out of the break, holding him running the route. So I just think that, uh, you know, in the NFL they call it more. You know, they even actually call it defensive holding uh, when it really – uh, would not be called in college because unless they restrict you running your route, uh, they, they, don't, they don't call it as much. But uh, I thought it was uh, a lot of those calls were correct, uh, and they could have called more. And uh, I think secondly, yes, the linebacking core took a little bit of a hit this, this game. Uh, there's going to be some guys either out or, you know, game time decisions. Uh, right now, OC Brothers has been back pretty healthy, uh, so he's going to have to go the distance. J Jacob Wahlberg's another one that's going to have to go the distance. And then Samizi, who's played a lot of football for us, is going to have to go the distance. Those three are there, will be our top ones, and then we're getting some other guys ready to go. You know, after the game, Coach Bielham talked about the fact that I believe it was the same officiating crew on Saturday that they had against Indiana in their opener, and they got called a few times in that game. Uh, when do you find out who the officiating crew is and what kind of difference does that make in, in what you would say or how you would approach a game? Well, actually, we, we don't find out uh, until the, the day of the game, and I really don't try to find out. I, I'm not uh, against any referees. I, I just want them to call the game fair. Um, you know, when he talked about the Indiana game, well, you know what? Indiana throws the ball. So if you're going to hold uh, and, and you think you're going to get away with it, well, they're gonna, teams should, or the referees should call pass interference. And I just think that uh, – as I watched the video, uh, I thought every call was correct, uh, and there might have been two that they did not call, at least on us running routes that they could have called. So, um, you know, when you teach holding, uh, you're going you're to get caught. And I just think that uh, from what I've seen on film, uh, the referees did as good a job as they could. You know, there's a couple other calls, you know, one on the, the snap that goes over the center quarterback's head where they call us for disconcerting signals when it's the same move call we, we use on every time we ship. That was an awful call that should never been never been called that really cost us a five-yard penalty when it should have been backed up another 20 yards uh, because they didn't really throw it away as well. So there were some other calls as well, and sometimes they go the way, sometimes they don't, and you just got to live with it. But I, I, I definitely think that uh, you know all the pass interference calls were correct. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Good. 
Russo doing a nice job. That's a tough entry. Really tough. The bounce for Gillis, who ends up on the ground, nearly had it pried away from him. And he just smashes it home anyway. High percentage. Very patient to find a good shot. Good cut. Doesn't Hard matter. Cut. And he wipes it away. Ooh. That almost hit. Not rush it. The big fella involved a little bit, and right here, the present here at Purdue. A lot of people come back to games. They like the program. They like the kind of kids they have. Oh, too bad. Andy just absolutely hammers. What a nice call, too, out of the baseline, out of bounds. Half is fair for college basketball. But look at this little duck in seal. Another court between should we attack or should we go inside? Oh, good settle here. Edie's been waiting for the ball for two possessions. Absolutely. Jerry, you are dead on delivery. And right here, goal no matter what he does. That's number four. If I'm not mistaken, my goal. Now late in the shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late, drive, stop and pop. Got it for two. Oh, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled. But here, just a little split, a little crossover, dead delivery. He wants it reversed, and they got him. Again, a late right delivery. Yeah, he called nice for cut. It. Over the head to burst. Affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Boilermakers and Wildcats Saturday at noon. Bundle up. It's going to be chilly, about 30, 32 degrees, somewhere in that range. Uh, but uh, I know we're going to have a big crowd again on Saturday, and hopefully they're out early and ready to go because this is their last chance to watch this senior class play. Well, our crowd's been tremendous, and uh, I know they'll show out again. Our, our seniors and our team looking forward to getting back home. and. Yes, it'll be chilly, and uh, we've been practicing uh, in the elements every day. Today was uh, snowy and, and uh, snow on the ground and windy and cold, and our guys have handled it well, and uh, that's, that's, looks like that's the way it's going to be on Saturday. So uh, we're looking forward to it, and uh, you know, we want to do the best job we can to help our seniors go out on a good note. Charlie Jones went over the 1,000 mark for the season, uh, which is a great accomplishment for him. But I think the impressive thing on Saturday is you had other guys that you threw to. Payne Durham and T.J. Sheffield both came up huge for you against the Illini. Well, we needed every last uh, amount of all those plays that were made. And without question, uh, getting the ball to Payne Durham more was beneficial. Without question, T.J. Sheffield came ready to play and made some good plays for us. And uh, that's going to be important as we continue to move forward is, is more guys stepping up and not only that, just Aiden feeling more comfortable throwing to, you know, all of our receivers and giving them a chance to get open, and it was good to see. We've talked about your offensive line several times this year, but another game, you did not give up any quarterback sacks, and you had another 100-yard rushing performance against the nation's number one defense. You scored more points and got more yards than anybody has against them all season. Well, they had played really well, and uh, it was a challenge, and I, I do think our guys responded. And, uh, you know, being able to do those things that you just mentioned was an accomplishment. Um, I think all of, everything mattered. The, the uh, quarterback getting it out quick, the offensive line blocking, our running backs running hard. Um, I mean, everything mattered. Uh, the, the, the plays that we called, it was just uh, something that we, we worked hard at. We knew that uh, this was an aggressive style of defense that put a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage, and they liked to – get after the quarterback and get sacks and get negative plays and turnovers, and we had to do our very best to, to uh, minimize that. You know, the weather conditions were rough on Saturday, not as bad as they were against Iowa. How much of an effect, especially w was the wind on Saturday, and how much did it affect how, what you were able to do offensively? Well, without question, it wasn't near as bad as the week before, which was, was pretty, pretty difficult and challenging. Uh, you know, it was chilly and it was windy. Definitely one way the wind was blowing harder than the other, and, uh, you know, sometimes that even though – it should be easier going with the wind. It sometimes affects the throws more. But I think our guys adjusted to it pretty well. And, and uh, you know, if it can stay like that, you're, you're normally able to do most of the things that you would like to. You know, a guy that we haven't talked a whole lot about this year, but I think is quietly having a very productive season is Jack Ansel. And we saw a couple of weeks ago in the, in the Iowa game, he booted a couple even against the wind that, that really helped. But I thought he had some huge kicks for you on Saturday against Illinois that really helped field position-wise in a game that you needed that help. It did, and I think he's really matured, and uh, he works really hard. He cares. Um, 
he's been a little nicked up, uh, but you know he just seems way more relaxed. Uh, even the time when he, he caught the ball and kind of hesitated because they weren't rushing and, and allowed the uh, our, our punt coverage team to get down the field was a great move by him. But I just really see him coming into his own and. And to win games, uh, you got to have all three segments, uh, you know, doing their part. So, you know, we're, we're happy with the progress that he's made. You know, I was happy to see that things did not get into, out of hand as the teams came out of the locker room. And we always saw earlier this year with Michigan and Michigan State and the tunnel incident, uh, when you get an emotional football game, and, and, and you could see both teams yelling at each other when they went into the locker room at halftime, and you just had a feeling that something might happen. And um, were you out on the field when everybody was congregating, or and how did that all get separated without anything worse happening? Well, you know, you want to try to uh, not have any of that happen. Uh, when when teams have to cross the field to go into locker rooms, it's not a, a great setting, and uh, if they're not going to manage it in a good way, where you can take a little bit of a different path, I mean, you're, you're going to have some jawing. Uh, the disappointing part is, you know, I was out there, and uh, we're stretching. Um, to start the second half where we normally do on our sideline and they're, they start to try to stretch in the end zone on our half of the field and that's just not going to mm. go over. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I got a, supposed to have a call on with the head of the officials this week to kind of get clarification on you know, were we not in the right spot or, I mean, why are they taking our half of the field when they have their whole sideline over there? So, you know, there's some things that uh, need to be cleared up, uh, but, uh, you know, you don't want anything to happen because, uh, you know, that's unfortunate. But I do think there's there's ways to minimize that by, uh, you know, planning ahead and making sure that you try to avoid that. You know, just like the, the Michigan tunnel, I mean, yes, things shouldn't happen. But when you're going in the same tunnel, uh, and if there's not going to be a way where one team can go first and the other one has to wait, I mean, you're, you're asking for trouble. All right, we're going to be back here at Walk-Ons in a couple of minutes. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Getting your degree online as a working adult doesn't mean you have to sacrifice a high-quality education. For 153 years, as one of the world's most it's respected field, and innovative... We return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. For nearly a century, Ross-Age Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as it is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Time. Uh, we will let you know uh, this is the last Wednesday show of the season. Next week's show, which is Thanksgiving week, we will be on next Tuesday night. So we'll have the Matt Painter show on Monday night, and then the Jeff Brom show will be next Tuesday night. And then we do have another show scheduled for December 22nd. We'll be talking about the Boilermakers signing class and also about the bowl because the, the sixth win last week made Purdue Bowl eligible. Checking in on Facebook tonight, Littlestown, Pennsylvania, Marietta, California, Swamico, Wisconsin. We have uh, New York City with us tonight, uh, Boonville, and Syracuse. And uh, good luck to the folks in Syracuse and in western New York. I saw that Buffalo is expecting three feet 
three feet of snow in the next three days. And it's a good place not to be, not to be anymore. I'm from there and happy to not be there at the moment. Uh, senior day coming up. You have 27 players listed as seniors. How will you handle things on Saturday? Does everybody go through, or is that still being worked out? How many players will actually go through senior day activities? Well, I don't know the exact number. And uh, just like last year, uh, due to COVID, you know, we're going to have some guys even go through it that will be back next year. Uh, for us, you know what, we're, we're concentrating on the season. Uh, we really haven't had those conversations with our guys to make them make a decision of what they want to do or where they're leaning. You know, we want them to just go ahead and play and let's just worry about football and being the best football team we can be. And, um, and then after the season, we'll have those conversations to see where everyone stands. But, uh, you know, a lot of guys that have played a lot of football for us, uh, done a lot of great things. Um, It'll be great for them and, and their family to be there. And, uh, you know, we just appreciate all their efforts and uh, all the hard work because it all is, is paid off. Northwestern, a team coming in on the Saturday that has struggled this year. They won their opening game in Dublin and then have lost their last nine. But the one thing you know about a Pat Fitzgerald coach team, they are going to play hard until the final whistle. Well, it'll be a tough physical football uh, game. Uh, Northwestern always plays us well. Uh, they, they've had the upper hand on us. Uh, we've had a hard time beating them because of those things, because they're well coached. They play good defense. They run the football. They don't make mistakes. Kind of the same formula uh, as Wisconsin and Iowa uh, that are hard to beat. And you know, right now, as you watch, maybe they haven't been as effective on offense, and that's caused them not to win some games. But they've been very close. Uh, Ohio State, Maryland, um, you know, there, there's a few others that, uh, you know, Duke, uh, there's a few other games that went right down to the wire. So they're going to play physical. Uh, they have nothing to lose. Uh, they're going to come ready to play. We're going to have to, you know, make sure we're, we're sharp, we're focused, and we're locked in and, and do a lot of really good things well in order to win. I was really impressed last year up at Wrigley Field with their running back, Evan Hall. He's uh, getting close to another 1,000-yard season. He had 1,000 a year ago. Hard runner, and again, a guy that can, seems to get better as the game goes on. Well, he's uh, a guy that uh, can make a difference for him, and we've got to know where he's at. We've got to figure out a way to, to, to stop him and, and minimize uh, his big plays, and uh, you know their offense feeds off of him, so that's got to be a focal point for Pat, the defense. Pat Fitzgerald was a Hall of Fame college football player at Northwestern. What does he do defensively that traditionally makes his teams hard to score against? Well, like I said, uh, you know, very similar style to the Iowa defense, meaning that uh, they're physical up front. You know, their linebackers play downhill. Uh, they're not going to do a lot of crazy things on defense. It's going to be sound. It's going to be fundamentally sound. You're going to have to figure out a way to make plays. They're going to stop the run. Uh, they're not going to give you a bunch of easy completions, but they're not going to give you the deep pass as well. And I just think they, you know, They've had a really good formula of doing that for a long time, uh, but their their definitely strength is, is defense uh, and being physical and running the football. So it's just a you know a really sound system, and those guys understand it, and uh, you know they play really really hard. Jeff, you've been pretty consistent with your approach all season long, and really the entire time you've been at Purdue, and that is a one week season. Everybody can see the standings. Everybody knows what's going on. How do you keep the outside noise of if we do this, then this happens from creeping in and and maybe dampening some preparation for this week? Well, you know, the season never really knows what's going to happen uh, until the very end, and that's why you got to play to the end. And uh, we have two games left, and our only goal is to, to win these football games and do the best job we can and find a way to improve and go out and put a good performance on. And if you don't do those things, nothing matters. So, it's uh, you know, we got to take care of our business, uh, and that's always a challenge in itself. So we can't focus on anything else. And uh, there's a lot of things that happen, happen, have to happen down the road, but – uh, for us, it's about, you know, winning this football game, sending our seniors out on a good note, making sure we try to improve upon our performance last week. All right, we're going to give the coach a break. When we come back to the Jeff Brom Show, we'll have Jalen Graham with us. The Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Your car may never be worth more than it is right now. It's really tough to get loose. Cold weather, November football in the Big Ten. Hello! Up over the top, Payne Durham, the hurdle. He's in the stack, bottom of the screen. DeVito looks that way, surveys the field, in trouble, down he goes. There's a flag in the backfield. For blocker in the box, there, go, there they go again, same, same play, opposite side. Flips it, Maccabi turns the corner, there goes crazy legs, tiptoeing. And West Lafayette. They go right back to Maccabi. In. Touchdown, Purdue! A drive that belongs to Devin Mockaby. Four carries, 46 yards. 
for a Boilermaker touchdown. You think about last week and then the start of this game, so many throws. Big Ten titles win rivalry games like this one. O'Connell throwing on first down, right on the money, hauled in. The penalty negates the interception. Purdue stays on the field. O'Connell floats it. It's caught! Touchdown, Charlie Jones! Just able to kind of get himself to game day week in and week out. Now this is the one rare time that it's not Witherspoon matched up with Jones on the outside. It's Martin. Look at this ball. O'Connell's got all day to throw. It's Champagne, Dustin Fox, Jay Alter, Lord Sisler. A battle in the Big Ten. A tight one. Not much to separate these two. O'Connell has Sheffield wide open. Can they put out the flames here? O'Connell. Rolling left. Floats back in the end zone. Jump ball. It was caught. Touchdown, Purdue. Payne Durham fires the Boilermakers in front. Be fourth down, and they back him up, so it makes the field goal attempt. Really a question of which foot comes down. Play action. O'Connell. It's caught. Payne Durham dragging a man all the way for a Purdue touchdown. Touchdown signal given. Payne Durham muscling his way to breaking the plane and firing Purdue back in front. We've been talking about the tight end being an issue for the Illinois defense the last two weeks. Critical third and five. DeVito throws quickly. Batted ball. It's intercepted. <laughs>feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Big game for Rondale Moore last week for the Arizona Cardinals. Nine catches, 94 yards in the win over the LA Rams. In that same game, Bryson Hopkins had a catch for 11 yards for the Rams. Raheem Mostert with the Miami Dolphins, eight carries, 65 yards and a touchdown in the win over the Browns. David Bell did have three receptions for 24 yards in that game. And George Karloftis with the Kansas City Chiefs had a couple of tackles in the win over Jacksonville. George is tied with Aiden Hutchinson for the most rookie pressures on the quarterback at 28. So again, a great uh, year coming up for uh, George Karloftis. And his former teammate is uh, sitting next to us, Jalen Graham. Uh, what was it like playing behind Big George? Uh easier <laughs> made, he made life easier of course uh but no it's always fun playing with george you know he's gonna give 110 percent effort every play and every time he's out there so it was just fun we've seen jalen graham around the field at linebacker at safety uh, as you look to the next level where do you think your future lies on the football field uh i'm not even sure to be honest uh kind of just listening to uh everybody and kind of giving their opinions and then really just wherever the nfl wants me then i'll be cool playing that uh, we mentioned the, with the coach earlier, the weather's been a little bit rougher in November than it usually is. When you're a player down in, with the Iowa game and then again with uh, Illinois last week, do you feel the cold and the wind very much as much as we feel it in the, uh, in the press box and down in the, in the stands? Uh, maybe a little more on the sideline, but once, once that uh, play snaps, you're not really thinking about being cold or anything like that. So you got to make the tackle or make the play or whatever you got to do. But on the sideline, you, I kind of feel like you guys – it has to be uh, fun to play in a game that's a rivalry game, that's a trophy game, and you got another one coming up here against Indiana next week. Uh, every every Big Ten game is intense, but that one went to it seemed yeah. like another level on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, it was just uh, I think they were they had a lot to prove. I think it was their last home game of the season, and then we had just came off our two losses and were trying to get a win. So it was just two teams really battling and competing out there. Uh, you were injured early in the season. Now, how are you feeling right now? Are you back at full strength and you're ready to go here down the stretch? Yeah, yeah, I'm back at full strength and feeling good. Uh, just, just practice today. We're feeling great, so just ready to go. Are you starting to count down? I mean, you get to the end of the season, and mm -hmm. I think uh, you love the games, but sometimes yeah. the practices get to be a little tough. Yeah, well, 
Uh, they do get tough, but like today it's snowing, so we kind of just had to have fun with it. So you're not thinking about it snowing and being cold. You coming from Detroit had to have played in some cold and maybe some wet games in the past. Mm-hmm. What did you ever play in any wild uh, games in high school in terms of the weather? Yeah, my freshman year of high school, I think the snow was like four inches like on, on the field. Like you couldn't see the field. It was just full of snow. So I didn't play in a couple games. A snow angel at all when you when you made oh, some no, tackles? Not me, not me. <laughs> Uh, what's it going to be like for you uh, playing uh, Saturday at Ross Aid, the uh, last home game of the season? A uh, lot still at, li- on, at stake. You know what's on the line, but in order for anything positive to happen, you've got to win these last two games. Yeah, uh, it's going to be fun. I haven't tried. I try not to think too much about it and kind of wait to get closer to it. But it's going to be fun. My family's going to be there. Like you said, it's my last game there, so I just kind of soaking it all in now. When you try to look back and summarize your career here at Purdue, what's you know, what will you take away from your time with as a Boilermaker? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just the the competitive games, like how much we're winning or lose, just how how competitive they were, how fun it was, just playing in tight tightly close games in in front of Ross Aid, or even if we're away and we come back and the fans are waiting for us at the airport and things like that. So it's just always fun. Uh, is there any particular game that stands out more than the other, either this season or in, the, in any season that you played here? Uh, probably for me, the Iowa, just because I don't think – or I know I didn't expect for uh, fans to be at the airport as soon as we got off the plane and they were all waiting. So that was just a cool experience. Yeah, last year's win over the Hawkeyes when they were undefeated and ranked number two in the country. Yeah. Uh, last question, the Northwestern game coming up, the Indiana game coming up. Uh, have you uh, thought in your mind maybe, you know, a great way to finish this off, pick six, couple sacks, couple fumble recoveries, anything? I mean, what, yeah. what, what do you – when you see these games play out in your mind, how do they work? Uh, well, my plan is just – I try to uh, make some turnovers. So if that is a big six or a sack or anything like that, but just the biggest thing is turnovers, period, and getting that ball back to the offense. I think a lot of fans at Ross State would be happy if that happened. Yeah. Uh, Jalen, congratulations. Not only a great season, a great career here at Purdue, and let's see if we finish on a real positive note. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll have Aiden O'Connell with us next. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Your car may <laughs> November football in the Big Ten. Hello, up over the top, Payne Durham, the hurdle. And West Lafayette. They go right back to Maccabee. And he's in. Touchdown, Purdue. A drive that belongs to Devin Maccabee. Four carries, 46 yards for a Boilermaker touchdown. You think about last week and then the start of this game, so many throws. The penalty negates the interception. Purdue stays on the field. O'Connell floats it. It's caught. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. Just able to kind of get himself to game day week in and week out. And this is the one rare time. Can they put out the flames here? O'Connell. Rolling left. Floats back in the end zone. Jump ball. It was caught. Touchdown, Purdue. Payne Durham fires the Boilermakers in front. Be fourth down, and they back him up. So it makes the field goal attempt. Really a question of which foot comes down. Play action. O'Connell. It's caught. Payne Durham dragging a man all the way for a Purdue touchdown. Late touchdown signal given. Payne Durham muscling his way to breaking the plane and firing Purdue back in front. We've been talking about the tight end being an issue for the Illinois defense. Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Roman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Roman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We are joined by senior quarterback Aiden O'Connell. I should say super, super senior, two-time graduate uh, quarterback Aiden O'Connell. 
when you look at your career and you're coming to an end here after six years, how do you, how do you put it all into perspective? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, I've said to people, I kind of feel like I have, you know, different careers here. You know, the first two years I wasn't playing and um, kind of feels like it's its own part. And then the second two years I started to play a little bit and, um, you know, that was a, a new experience. And then obviously the last two years got to play a little more. So I think it's kind of been an evolution and it's been uh, a lot of fun. It's, you know, when you're when you're in it, it just happens. But then when you take a step back and look at it, it's, it's pretty cool to see everything that's happened. Your story is one that has resonated across the country in the fact you are now a finalist for the Burlesworth Trophy, which is given to the top walk-on uh, who is playing college football. And you're a semifinalist for the Werfel Award, which is given for community service off the field. Uh, you've been recognized for your work on the field, but I would think those things have to be as meaningful knowing how you work and how you operate as the things that you've done on the field. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously super lucky to, you know, be considered for those. Um, a lot of great players have, you know, won those awards. And so those, I think, is a testament to the, the people around me. You know, it's especially when you're a walk-on, it, it takes a lot of support. I needed support from my parents, um, you know, obviously to, to help me with school until I got a scholarship. And I uh, obviously need support of coaches and people believing in me. So it's those things make me reflect and make me more grateful. Uh, a lot has happened in your life here in the last six years. A lot's happened in the last year, and you got a wedding ring on your hand now. Uh, how's married life these days? It's great. Uh, it's great. No complaints. Um, she's uh, making rice casserole right now, and I get to go home to a, a warm meal, so I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Life is good. Yeah, life is good. Uh, we talked with Jalen about the intensity of that Cannon Trophy the coming from your home state of Illinois. It had to be pretty gratifying to go over to Champaign, a place where Purdue's played pretty well in the past and come away with a win one more time. Yeah, it was, it was an awesome win. And obviously a very good team that's having a really good year and so for us to go there and I don't think a lot of people expect us to win uh, was a lot of fun and obviously the way we won was always coming down to the wire but uh, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun a great win for our team. I think a lot of people have been surprised at the productivity of Charlie Jones a guy that you've known since you were little kids uh, you haven't been surprised though because you saw from an early age what he was capable of doing. Yeah you know he's you know from a young age um, a lot fast and could catch the ball and you know, obviously when you're that age, it was kind of just, you know, Charlie, run as fast as you can, and I, I just try to throw it um, and see what happens. And so, you know, it's, it's been cool to reconnect with him, and uh, we didn't go to high school together, and obviously the first, you know, several years of college we weren't together. So it's been cool to, you know, see us, how we both grown up, but also we stayed uh, the same in a lot of ways. I saw the Big Ten uh, Network, the Journey episode that had you, you and, and uh, Charlie in there, and your parents were on, your dads were on, talking about the fact that back in those days, they told Charlie, you run as fast as you can, and Aiden, you throw it as far as you can, and usually that worked out pretty well. Yeah, you know, and when you're younger, you don't have defenses to read, you don't, you know, have route concepts, you really just have, you know, on this play, we're going to throw it to this guy no matter what. Uh, and we did that a lot, and it worked out a lot because, you know, Charlie, like you said, was mostly faster than most people. When you ran down the tunnel last year on senior day, you weren't sure if it was going to be the last time you were going to do that. You know that's the case on Saturday. Have you thought uh, about what your feelings are going to be as you walk down and, and come into that full stadium for the last time in your career? You know, it's, it's hard. Obviously, you want to be grateful. You want to take in the full moment uh, for what it is and, you know, soak everything in. But at the same time, you get got to go play a game, uh, got to go execute, and, um, try to win a, a Big Ten football game in the cold. So it's going to be, you know, you know, hard to keep mo emotions in check, but um, I think, you know, hopefully we can win the game and then celebrate after. It's been an incredible six years, Aiden. Uh, congratulations on what you've done, what you've accomplished, and also the legacy that you've had uh, in the time we've been here. We do have a caller. I think somebody wants to talk to you. This is Lucas from Fort Wayne. Lucas, go ahead with your question. Uh, hey, Coach Brom, once again, it's Lucas. Uh. Uh, wait a minute, Lucas, we, we have Aiden O'Connell on. Can you hang on for Coach Brom in the next segment? Unless you have a question for Aiden. All right, we're going to hold on that. So <laughs> keep Lucas on the line. Aiden, again, thank you uh, for what you've done, not only for Purdue on the field, but off the field, and best of luck this week and the rest of the way. Thanks very much. All right, we'll have more of the Jeff Brom Show after this, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You work hard, and at first Farmer. Three minutes in, 11 points for Marquette, four for five from the floor. Traded this down the lane for Brayton Smith. They probably played point guard at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. hockey, you're the hockey guy. There they go. There See, this, this, the kid in that series, the spacing wasn't good. There you go, Sam, anyway, for Fletcher Lawyer. 
Russo doing a nice job. That's a tough entry. Really tough. The bounce for Gillis, who ends up on the ground, nearly had a try to wave from him. And he just smashes it home anyway. High percentage. Very patient to find a good shot. Good cut. Doesn't Hard matter. Cut. And he wipes it away. That almost hit. Not rushing. fell involved a little bit and right here the present here at Purdue a lot of people come back to games they like the program they like the kind of kids they have that's oh, and he just absolutely hammers what a nice call too out of the baseline out of bounds half is fair for college basketball but look at this little duck in seal Another point between should we attack or should we go inside? Good set of the year. Edie's been waiting for the ball for two possessions. Absolutely. This area, you are dead on delivery. And right here, goal, no matter what he does. That's number four. If I'm not mistaken by goal. And late in the shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late drive. Stop and pop. Got it for two. Oh, well, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled. But here, just a little split, a little crossover, dip delivery. He wants it reversed, and they got him. Again, a late right delivery. Yeah, he called nice it away. Nice cut. Over the head Whoa. to first. Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. All right, when we last left you, we think Lucas from Fort Wayne is hanging around on the phone. Lucas, do you have a question for Coach Brom? Um, well, I have another question for Aiden, too. <laughs> well, hey. I'm from the Illinois game. I saw you got pain back in the rotation after a few games where he didn't have much action. Do you think they'll try and get to him more for the Northwestern game as well? He was asking about a rotation. I, I didn't get the first. Who, who did you say in the, in the first part of that question, Lucas? Uh, Payne Durham. Payne Durham. You know what? Actually, Lucas, that's a great question. And uh, you're, you're very uh, astute and, and smart because uh, we did – try to make a, a very conscious effort to get the ball to Payne Durham more uh, because uh, I think we needed to. Uh, so we finally smarted up and, and targeted him more. And, uh, of course, he came through. He made a lot of really good catches, a lot of contested catches. He dragged people over on his back. He jumped over people. And, and you're right. He needs to be a – you know, he's got a lot of experience. Uh, he's very talented. He needs to be a focal point. And we need to make sure we're spreading it around. But right now, you know, Charlie Jones has done a really good job. Payne Durham is the next one with, with, with a lot of experience. And then, of course, T.J. Sheffield and the others are going to start to step up. So I think you're, you're right on it. Uh, we need to make sure we utilize the tight end. And Aiden feels very, very comfortable throwing to him. Now, flipping over to the other side, Jeff, one guy that we seem to be calling a little bit more as the season goes on, Corday Sidnor is really starting to become a, a really a productive pass rusher for you, getting in the backfield, getting some sacks and some tackles for loss. You know, I, I just think that our defensive line, we've been able to rotate quite a few of those guys. They've all gotten better. Uh, they all give us great effort. Uh, they're coached well. Uh, they play hard. I think having Jalen back healthy uh, at linebacker gives us a lot of experience and He's not only good against the run, but he can drop uh, versus the pass and use his length to get in lanes and help our defensive backs. And when he's able to do both those things and our rush as well, it helps our defensive backs and everything matters. And I just think uh, this last game, we put things together better. Uh, we may have simplified a few things and a few calls on defense to let them play fast and just get lined up and play. And I think it really made a difference. Well, on one of those plays up front, Lawrence Johnson got a hand on that pass on Illinois' last possession, or next to last possession, that Kieran Douglas came down with the interception. You've had some batted balls at the line of scrimmage, and that's uh, one way to make a pass defense better is not let the ball get to the secondary. Well, every little thing matters, and uh, Lawrence actually does a really good job of, of batting balls and sniffing out the screen at times, and some screens have beat us at times uh, at, at the running back position, so we've got to do a good job of that. This team will throw the running back screen quite a bit as well, so we've worked it a lot uh, with our defensive line being able to retrace, reading the uh, the linemen and seeing if they're sneaking out, and the linebacker's got to be able to play downhill and uh, 
you know, attack the running back and get there before he can make moves. So all, every little thing matters, but I think our guys have worked really hard. They've had good energy this week, and they, they understand that this is a very important game. Yeah, back to Northwestern, one thing that uh, Coach Fitzgerald has always seemed to do, he's got a bag of tricks, and particularly on special teams, it seems like they do a lot of different things, both in the return game and, and punting the ball. They, they run fakes. Uh, I, I would assume you have to be on high alert at all time against the Wildcats. Well, you do. They're well coached, and uh, they've, they've, he's been doing it for a long time now. So he can uh, dig into those bag of tricks and, uh, and, and pull them out when he needs to. And uh, Like I said, they're a very smart football team. Uh, they're well coached. They're well, well schooled. And we've got to be sharp. We've got to make sure we, we can sniff things out. Uh, we're getting lined up quickly and properly. We're not allowing them certain looks where they can do those things. All right, we're going to have our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group after this, coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Attention fans, do you want a chance to win? Three minutes in, 11 points for Marquette, four for five from the floor. This down the lane for Brayton Smith. I probably played point guard at that time, right? Yeah, you're a hockey, you're a hockey guy. There they go. There's this is the key of that too, the spacing wasn't good. Or should we go inside? Good settle here. Edie's been waiting for the ball for two possessions. Absolutely. This area, you are dead on delivery. And right here, goal, no matter what he does. That's number four. If I'm not mistaken, my goal. And late in the shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late drive. Stop and pop. Got it for two. Well, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled. But here, just a little split. Crossover, dead delivery. He wants it reversed, and they got him. Again, a late right delivery. Yeah, he called nice it cut. Over the head to burst. Final segment of the Jeff Brom Show. While we have a moment, congratulations to our broadcast partner, Pete Quinn. Uh, his daughter, Kristen, delivered Quinn. Elise Combs on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday night, and uh, so Pete's a grandpa. He had a, he has a 10-year-old from uh, his son married someone who had a, ch a previous uh, child, so he's been a grandpa before, but this is the first baby in the Quinn family, so congratulations to Pete. Uh, I'm sure he'll teach that uh, youngster a lot of bad habits. Um, I want to go back to earlier in the show, we talked about the penalty call, and it was a, it was a really kind of a wild situation that took a long time to sort out the disconcerting signals. Uh, Illinois had a play where they snapped the ball over the quarterback's head, and it would have been a 20-yard loss. He, he threw the ball away. So we, as, as the play was going on and as the, the officials were conversing, we're, we're thinking, are they, they must be debating whether that was intentional grounding. So they dropped the flag, and we, of course, were very happy thinking it was that. And then all of a sudden, they marched it five yards the other way. So again, what what was the call, and what caused the call? Well, without question, it was an awful call, in my opinion. Um, you know, as a defense, you sometimes uh, stem uh, up front uh, to create um, a different look for the offensive line to block, because a lot of times they get up there and they make the call, and if you move to a different look, then they have to remake their call. So, you know, there's a lot of times we do that. We've already we'd already done it about five or six times in the game. Uh, we just make a, we say move about the linebacker and our guys move over. Nothing more than that. Our referees know going into it. And, and of all the times we did it, this was probably the, the least one where there was less movement than we had before and it was less demonstrative. And uh, so I thought nothing of it. And uh, yes, they came over when I was trying, I was arguing for a 
um, intentional grounding intentional grounding call uh, yeah. because it would have put him back where that ball was and a loss of down and all of a sudden it became a that yeah. call yeah. and uh, I was not very happy with that. I, I wouldn't think you were. Uh, when so when the official we see the officials have headsets on they go to the replay. I assume they let the both benches know before they make the announcement because sometimes in that case. You know, when, when you had the turnover that was called back, we saw your defense come back out on the field. Uh, it, it, so sometimes you know ahead of time what's, what's going to go on before they, before they announce it. Well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. And uh, this game, we weren't able to get uh, a lot of information. Um, and sometimes it's easier for the home team because that's where everyone is, is congregated and they have a little uh, easier way to, to hear what's going on. But, uh, you know, we just sent our defense out because our guys, our coaches upstairs, can kind of see themselves. And it was like, well, I don't know if we're going to get this call or not. Um, but, uh, you know, they try to communicate the best they can. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, you know, you, you hope the replay official gets some things right. Even when they, you know, had the one kind of catch where they fumbled, you know. Right. I, I, I wasn't in agreement. I was not in agreement with that call either. Um, yeah. And, and that was the play I was thinking because we saw your defense come back out on the field. Before, well, and before uh, to, to me, it, even our coaches upstairs said it wasn't a catch or uh, is what they kept saying. So, you know, you, like I said, you, you get some calls, you, you don't get the others, and you just hope to you come out on the winning end when it's all said and done. Lastly, along those lines, Jeff, do you have someone that's monitored? I don't know if you have access or if the coaches have access to a live feed, but – well, when you have a play that maybe they would want you to challenge, how do you decide whether you're going to challenge a play? Well, you really don't have access to anything other than your coaches upstairs can sometimes whatever's on the TV uh, can see a copy of that. Uh, so if we get a look, we'll say sometimes we just go by someone upstairs saying, hey, I think this happened. And sometimes I will err on trying to, to get it to replay as fast as, excuse me, uh, a challenge uh, because – I don't agree with the officials a lot, so I don't yeah. trust what they call. Uh, and even sometimes they say, well, he already, he already looked at it. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I, I want to replay it because yeah. I don't think he's right. I, I don't agree with that. And we've used a timeout or two uh, to do that, and actually we've been right a time or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives me the reason, like, well, I'm not going to trust what the replay official says by looking at it real quick. I want him to see it in detail, and sometimes they're trying to go fast. So. You just kind of have to go with your feel and your gut and what you think, and uh, you hope that uh, you know you come out uh, with the call going on your side. But in the end, you want it to be accurate, and I just think uh, you know sometimes they rush through that. Jeff, good luck this week on Senior Day. Let's uh, send those seniors off on a positive note. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks to our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, our producer, Austin Wilker. Our video is provided tonight by Hunter Massengill. Again, the Boilermakers taking on the Northwestern Wildcats. Kickoff will be at noon on Saturday. Our broadcast will begin at 11 o'clock. You can join Pete Quinn, Kelly Kitchell, and me for a Facebook Live segment coming up at 1030 on Sunday morning on the Purdue Athletics Facebook site. Again, no Jeff Brown show on Wednesday next week. We'll be on Tuesday. So Matt Painter on Monday and Jeff Brown on Tuesday. And again, the Boilermakers taking on Northwestern. For Jalen Graham, for Aiden O'Connell, and for Jeff Brown, this is Tim Newton. Thanks for listening tonight. Good night, everybody. The Jeff Brom Show has been brought to you by Rorman Auto Group, supporting your Boilermakers as a proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Auto Group, boiler up and hammer down.